I was thinking about terrain generation recently. I previously thought systems that you find in real games were designed by smart people who actually know what they're doing. But the more I look into it, the less that seems to be the case. In my previous games, I made terrain by matching the height to the color of an image, which works alright, but it's a bit boring. I wanted caves and mountains to appear. I knew that it had something to do with 3D Perlin noise, which is just like 2D Perlin noise, but, well, 3D. My adventure started when I found a method for generating 3D Perlin noise by combining lower dimensions. I didn't really understand it, but it was isolated logic. I only needed to know how you use it, which is pretty straightforward. Just choose a point and get a value back. However, I didn't understand how you'd actually create terrain from it. Were you supposed to draw a mesh around certain regions of it? Clearly you needed to be an expert in algebra, physics, calculus, and cooking in order to use this effectively. But then I had a bit of a revelation. From my 2D terrain, I wasn't recreating the noise, I was just sampling it picking points at set intervals on the X and Y and building a mesh between them. What if I just sampled the 3D noise and then put cubes in the space between them, setting the transparency to the value returned from the noise, or more realistically, only creating a cube if the point sampled is above a certain threshold? I took about 5 minutes to write a basic algorithm to do just that, and, what do you know? It did nothing. It turns out that if you sample Unity's Perlin noise with an integer, it'll always give you the same value, which happened to be just under the threshold, which I set to 0.5. So I made a noise scale variable to combat this, and then this happened. It generated a little ball of cubes. And then I turned around and saw this. Had I done it? Surely it couldn't have been this easy. Where was all the complicated math and cooking? I tried generating some more, but unfortunately it turned into a slideshow. A quick Google search led me to believe that I needed to combine all of these blocks into a giant mesh to improve performance. So I did. And this happened. It turns out meshes can only have 65,536 vertexes. Vertices, vertexes. A quick little algorithm can handle that. I didn't bother to get rid of the mesh faces that were facing the inside since that seemed difficult. Success. I had done it. Now we get to the fun part. I exposed all of the variables I could into the editor for quick changes and made G the update button, which resulted in hours of endless fun. I also discovered that by ignoring all blocks outside of a certain radius resulted in a planet-like structure. Much cooler than what I had done previously. But this is voxel terrain. I want to be able to drive a car over it. And everyone knows you can't have voxels in a game without being accused of copying Minecraft. The remainder of the day was spent trying to figure out how to smooth it out. I tried drawing lines between adjacent blocks, and it looked something like this. Then moved on to diagonals as well. Obviously, it's a complicated mess. I thought I could simplify it by removing blocks that were in the middle, but that didn't help much. It also introduced a bug where it would sometimes draw lines where they shouldn't be. I decided to abandon this approach. I downloaded what appear to be working examples, but I couldn't figure out how to implement them into my project. They all mentioned something called the Marching Cubes algorithm, which is intended to smooth out pixelated graphics. Or voxelated, if that's a word. I understand the concept, but getting it to work would be difficult. The popular game Astroneer does this well. I did some detective work to see if I could uncover some information about their planet generation. This Reddit post by one of the developers says he was thinking about writing a blog post about this, but it's been two years and we still don't have one. Though, in a later tweet, he mentions using the Marching Cubes algorithm, which tells me I'm on the right track. He also mentions the existence of some free library, presumably Polyvox, the creators of which also created Cubiquity for Unity, but now it's taken down for some reason, likely because it broke in a later version of Unity. And that's as far as I got in terms of Astroneer's terrain generation. I actually found most of this information while writing this script. It feels so detective-y. There's also a $5 asset on the asset store that suggests it can do this with a vague screenshot, but it's never mentioned elsewhere. Just a couple days ago, procedurally generated planets were out of my reach, but now I know enough to justify looking into it. I guess this shows that distractions can sometimes lead us in the right direction. Productivity breeds more productivity, and if I hadn't went down this rabbit hole then I would have spent these few days wondering what would have happened if I had. Of course, for now I'll go back to working on my current project, but after I finish it we might get a more interesting sequel to a certain game of mine.